for men, amen. And we thank God for using them in the ministry of music. We thank God for each of you who are present in this place as we celebrate what is called Memorial Weekend, amen. How many of you have your Bible? If you have your Bible, elevate your Bible with me and repeat after me. This is my Bible. It is the authoritative word of God. When I practice its principles, I can do what it says I can do. I can be who it says I can be. I'm a believer, not a doubter. I'm the head, not the tail. I'm the victor, not the victim. I walk by faith. I walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. God bless you. I have the challenge today of preaching a message that I pray will be a blessing to you. And um, open your Bibles with me to the Old Testament writings that are found in the book of Joshua, chapter number four. Joshua, chapter number four. Joshua, chapter number four. Amen. It is a beautiful day, and um, I pray that you will help me to preach this message, amen, by being enthusiastic for Jesus. Well, I see we're going to be here for a while, amen. Y'all make me work hard, I work hard, and we'll be here for a while, so why don't we... Uh, why don't we do this before I go a step further? We need to get some practice in. Nudge your neighbor, the person nearest to you, and say, shout amen. 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 All right, all right. Now that was pretty good, but that wasn't good enough. That wasn't good enough. That wasn't good enough. N nudge him one more time and say, say amen as loud as you can. All right, all right, I think we might get there, amen. Joshua chapter number, number four. I'm going to read and you're hearing a number of verses. Um, I want to read verse one through seven, and then we're going to read verses 19 and 20 of Joshua chapter number four. I'm reading from the King James Version translation of the Bible. Amen. It says, and it came to pass when all of the people were completely passed over the Jordan, that the Lord spoke unto Joshua saying, take you 12 men out of the people, out of every tribe a man, and command ye them, saying, Take here out of the midst of the Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stones, and ye shall carry them over with you and leave them in the lodging place where ye shall lodge this night. Then Joshua called the twelve men whom he had prepared of the children of Israel, out of every tribe a man. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan, and take ye up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder, according unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. And this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? Then shall ye answer them that the waters 
of the Jordan were cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord when it passed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. And these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. Verses 19 and 20. And the people came up out of the Jordan on the tenth day of the first month and encamped in Gilgal in the east border of Jericho. And those twelve stones which they took out of the Jordan did Joshua set up in Gilgal. Thus is the reading of the word of our God, the grass withereth, the flower thereof fadeth away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. For the next little while, we want to talk about the significance of Gilgal. The significance of Gilgal. You may be seated in the presence of uh, the Lord. Just another day that the Lord has kept me just one more day that the Lord has kept me he's kept me from all evil with my mind stayed on him just one more day hey the lord has kept me listen I'm mighty glad that the Lord, he has kept me. I'm mighty glad that the Lord, he has kept me. He He has kept me from all, all evil with my mind stayed on him just one more day. Hey, that the Lord has, he's kept me. Listen, let me begin this preaching moment by sharing with you a story that uh, you might find rather interesting or even comical. Uh, there is a fellow named John and, and John was noted as having a horrible memory. One day Dick and Henry he happens to see a longtime friend named Bill whom he's not seen for quite some time. They began to, to speak and to exchange greetings and, um, and John says to, to Bill, he says, Bill, you remember, I used to have a bad memory. Bill said, man, yeah, I remember you had a terrible memory. John said, Bill, I don't have a bad memory anymore. My wife and I, we went to a seminar. And man, it was a great seminar. They they taught you how to remember. Bill said, that's, that's great, man. That's, that's interesting. What was the name of, of the seminar? John said, uh, hold on a minute. Let me ask my wife. So he turns, 
he turns and he looks in the direction of his wife and he recognizes that his wife is not standing awfully far away. And, and so he turns back to Bill and he says, Bill, he says, what's the name of that flower with a long stem and got thorns, you know, on the stem and it's got a red bloom? Bill said, Rose? He said, yeah, Rose, what was the name of that seminar? Listen, God, my beloved, realizes that we often forget the things that he has done for us. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 12, Moses issued a final warning to Israel just before they entered into the promised land. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. The meaning, the meaning of, of the, the Hebrew word that is used today in our text, particularly in verse number seven, the word memorial, the Hebrew word for it is to mean this, to, to simply remember. And given our propensity as human beings to, to forget, it is little wonder then that, that memorials have frequently played an important role in biblical history. We as human beings have the tendency of having short memory. At the foot of Mount Sinai, Moses built an altar of stone to commemorate God's covenant with Israel in Exodus 12 and 14. And in the text that we have selected on today as we celebrate what is called Memorial Day weekend, we see God commanding his people to erect a memorial. No, notice, uh, if you will, according to verse number one, when the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan River that the Lord gave more specific instructions. In verses two through five, he says, choose 12 men from among the people, one from each tribe, and tell them to take up 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan, from right where the priest stood, and carry them over with you, and put them down at the place where you stay for tonight. So, so Joshua in the text uh, calls together the 12 men uh, he had appointed from within the Israelites, one from each of the 12 tribes, and says unto them, go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder according to the number of the tribes of Israel. Now, now, according to these verses, 12 men had been chosen in chapter 3, verse 12, and they were to go back to where the priest's feet had stood in the middle of the river. Understand something, Jordan is significant and symbolic uh, of that final place that stands between them and their destiny. Jordan, my beloved, is symbolic of that, that, that physical, uh, yes, element that prevents them from reaching what God has promised them. But notice that each man was to pick up a large rock, a stone from the middle of the Jordan and carry it to the side of the river where Israel would spend the night. In other words, my beloved, they were 
to carry them over into the camp in the land of Canaan. Now I want you to notice three things and I'm going to preach this message relatively briefly. Notice with me three reasons and three things, my beloved, that, that make uh, this place called Gilgal to be particularly important. F first of all, we discover something. We discover that it is a place to remember what God has done. It is a place to remember what God has done. The, these stones, notice in verse number seven, it says, these stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. Noteworthy is the usage of the word forever. My, my beloved, God does not do things in our lives simply for us to remember it short term. God does not do things in our lives merely for us just to remember from week to week. But God does things in our lives for the express purpose of us remembering forever. First of all, the memorial stones were to be a reminder of their own personal experience. Notice that in verse 6, this memorial will cause their children to ask, what do these stones mean to you? These stones, first of all, were to be a reminder uh, to them of what God had done in their personal experience. All of us who are present in this place on today, we ought to remember what God has done personally for us. One of the tragedies of the modern church is that we often want to talk about what God has done in the life of somebody else. But might I suggest on this Lord's Day that what God has done in my life ought to be important to me. I wish I had a witness. What God has done in my life ought to formulate and be the foundation of my testimony. And might I suggest I don't need anybody to tell my testimony. Just as you ought not need anybody to share your testimony. If anybody's going to share your testimony, it ought to be you. You ought to talk about the goodness of the Lord in your life. You ought to be the one who shares what the Lord has done for you. Have I got a witness here? And so then, my brothers and my sisters, the suggestion is that these stones or to be a reminder to tell your story. You ought to keep a clear memory in your mind of what God has done for you. And might I suggest not only ought you have a memory in your mind, but every chance you get, you ought to tell your story. Your children need to know your story. They need to know that you've not always been who and where you are right now. They need to know what God has done in your life. I know that many of us want to instill in our children our legacies as it relates to our bloodline, our history, our genetic history, where they came from in regard of their great, great, and great grandparents. We want them to know the lineage through which they have come, but might I suggest on today, not only is there a DNA lineage, not only is there a physical bloodline, but there ought to be a spiritual bloodline. Your children ought to be told the day that you met Jesus. Talk to me, somebody. I, 
I want my children to know their lineage from a DNA perspective, but I want them to know that I have a spiritual heritage. I have a spiritual spiritual lineage. I, I came from a lineage of folk who praised the Lord and served the Lord and magnified the Lord and honored the Lord and worshiped the Lord. And so what I want you to consider with me on today is what kind of memorials do you have in your life? Whether you realize it or not, my beloved, we all have memorials in our lives. They might not be a monument of stone, but they might be one built up of memories. First of all, there are memories of places, places that or to trigger some fond memories in your mind. There ought to be some memories that serve just as these stones served as a memorial at Gilgal. Can I tell you on today, I've got some memorial places in my mind. Just as this weekend, there will be many who will visit Arlington National Cemetery. There will be many that visit national cemeteries all around the length and breadth of this nation. Those cemeteries are a memorial, a reminder of what has gone on, yes, during the Civil War and even since. But the reality of it is, my beloved, there ought to be some places that trigger some memories in your mind about the goodness of the Lord. For example, you ought to remember the day you met Jesus. I ain't getting no amens. I say you ought to remember the day that you met Jesus. Stay with me if you will. How many of you know your birthday? If you know your birthday, I just need you to hold up your hand. If you know your, some of y'all might have forgotten. <laughs> now on your birthday, you want loved ones to memorialize that day, don't you? Talk back at me if you can. You feel offended if you don't get no card. Some of you get offended if you don't have a birthday party. Talk to me, somebody. Some of you get offended. Y'all looking at me like, no, I don't. And yes, you do, too. Because you're human beings and people, particularly those who are dearest and closest to you, don't remember your birthday. You are easily offended. Well, with the ease with which you know your birthday, you ought to know the day that you were reborn over again. You ought to know the day that God came into your life. You ought to be able to identify that a change took place in your life. Why should you be able to identify the day that you were born again? Because it was a day that God gave you a fresh start. It was a day that God gave you a new outlook on life. It was the day that God eradicated and erased your past and gave you a brand new opportunity. Every believer in the house today ought to be praising the Lord for the day that you were born again. Lord, never let me forget the day that I got saved. I say, Lord, never let me forget the day that I gave the preacher my hand, but I gave God my heart. Lord, never let me forget the day <laughs> that you picked me up 
and turn me around. See, y'all don't know when to shout because folk who've been bound again get excited when you talk about being bound again. When you consider the fact that you were on your way to hell and we were not fit to live, nor good enough to die, and some of us had done some stuff that we didn't want nobody to know about, but God gave us another chance. And we ought never forget that by the grace of God, God has given us another chance. It reminds me, reminds me, my beloved, the fact that not only are there places that ought to remind us, but there ought to be experiences that remind us of the goodness of the Lord. I'm reminded of a story of the late Dr. W.A. Criswell. Dr. Chris Well, former president of the Southern Baptist Convention, he was longtime pastor of the First Baptist Church of Dallas for over 50 years, a congregation that grew to more than 20,000. He was a noted author, but Dr. Chris Well tells the story of when he was a little boy. He was about 10 years of age, and at his home church, a fella named Dr. Johnny Hicks came to do their annual revival. Uh, Dr. Hicks, because hotels were not prevalent in that day, he had the privilege of staying at the Criswell home. And W.A. Criswell, being about 10 years of age, he was enamored by Dr. Johnny Hicks. He watched him, he observed him, he heard him talk. That was in the private setting of their home. But when the revival was approaching the end on that Friday night, Dr. W.A. Criswell says that Dr. Hicks preached so profoundly that the Spirit of the Lord drew him at 10 years of age to get up. He remembers that Dr. Hicks met him at the front of the sanctuary, took him by the hand, and in that instant led him to Christ. Some years later, Dr. Chris Well and another friend were in discussion, and uh, Dr. Chris Well said to his friend, he said, are you familiar with Dr. Johnny Hicks? The friend said, yes, as a matter of fact, I was with him just a few months back on his deathbed as he was dying. And uh, Dr. Hicks, for all that he did, he felt as though he had not done anything for the cause of Christ. W.A. Criswell said to the mutual friend, he said, oh yes, he did a lot. He might have felt as though he did not do much and his efforts did not amount to much. He says, but the reality of the fact is that he led me to Jesus. He says, he changed my life. And as a result of Johnny Hicks feeling that he hadn't done much, the reality was that through the life of W.A. Criswell, he would go on to perpetuate the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. W.A. Criswell would become president of the largest aggregation of Baptists in the world. W.A. Criswell would pastor one of the largest churches in this nation in spite of the fact that Johnny Hicks thought that he had not done very much. The reality is, my beloved, is that there ought to be things in your life and experiences in your life and people in your life that you ought not never forget. Have I got a witness here? I, I never will forget the late Mrs. Session, who was my teacher. Mrs. Session instilled in me the discipline of God. That that was a time and an era in our world when they just did not teach you math, science, and, 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 and English, but they taught you how to treat one another. When teachers would instill in you how to have character, how to go about and interact, to have good 
citizenship. I, I never will forget of how she used to slap me on my hands with a ruler, talk to me somebody, and I would holler out. It was a reminder to me that I needed to have the principles of high moral and high character. In your life, you ought to have folk that you remember, people who deposited nuggets in your life. I know we live in a world now where everybody is about me, myself, and I, and all of us suppose that we've made it on our own, but can I tell you, on today, you've not gotten where you are by yourself. It was somebody that God used to help you get where you are. I, I, Y'all ain't going to talk back at me. Is there anybody that you can reflect upon today and remember that they were instrumental in your life? They took you under their wing. They nurtured you. They instructed you. They guided you. They loved you. They protected you. They in inspired you, they motivated you, they invested in you, they cultivated you. Is there anybody as you sit here right now, you ought to praise God that you had a teacher, or that you had a boss, or that you had a neighbor, or that you had somebody else that was instrumental in your life. And so he says that Gilgal is symbolic not only of places but of experiences and people that have done things in your life. Note it, notably, when I look at the text, it also is symbolic of a place where God answers prayer. Hmm. God answers prayer prayer. Has God ever answered prayer in your life? Y'all not excited enough for me? I say, has God ever answered prayer in your life? Stay with me, somebody. Have you ever been down and out and had to pray? Have you ever been in trouble and had to pray? Has your back ever been against the wall and you had to pray? H have you ever been in a vicarious position where you felt as though you were not going to make it and you pray? Have you ever stood all by yourself with nobody on your side and you had to pray? Can I tell you on today, you ought to remember that God answers prayer. Gilgal is symbolic of the fact that when you're down and out, that God will show up. God will entertain your prayer. God will heed your cry. God will hasten to your rescue. God will make a way out of no way. Envision, if you will, Jordan River stands between them and their destiny but God in his providence rolls back the Jordan River. I've got a question for somebody in the house has God ever rolled back anything in your life when your soul should be overcome by the adversity of life but God shows up in the midst of your situation and God rolls Rolls back. Oh, some of us have forgotten that God has made a way out of no way. Some of us have forgotten that God has done for us what no one else could do. Some of us have forgotten that God brought us through situations unscathed when we should have been burnt up when we should have been utterly destroyed, but God blessed us to cross through without being touched, and we've stepped on the other side, and here we are on this beautiful Lord's Day, and some of us have forgotten about what God has done for us. But if God 
has done anything for you. You ought to lift your voice. You ought to shout with the voice of thanksgiving unto the Lord. Lord, I thank you that what should have taken me out didn't take me out. What should have destroyed me didn't destroy me. But you bless me to walk across on dry ground. Stay with me. I got to let you go. Secondly, the text shows us this. The text shows us that Gilgal, get this, Gilgal, my brothers and my sisters, is a place where God literally reveals himself to his people. Now, how does he do it? Well, he does it by allowing them to renew their personal commitment. Look at the text, because in verse number 8, look at what it says. And the children of Israel did so, as Joshua commanded. And what did they do? They took up 12 stones out of the midst of the Jordan, as the Lord spoke unto Joshua, According to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, carried them over with them unto the place where they lodged and laid them down. My beloved, Gilgal is significant because it signifies the place of personal renewal and commitment. One of the tragedies of our not forgetting is that, get this, Many times when we as humans opt to forget, we also lose the possibility of being renewed. Some of us have forgotten. Many of us say there are things that I would much rather forget. But might I suggest to you on today, you ought not ever forget what the Lord has done for you. No matter how painful the experience is, whenever God permits you to remember what you've come through, what you've come through ought to serve as a point and a reference point of renewal and renewed commitment. No, notice, if you will, the reason that God wanted them to take these stones and to place them where they were to lodge that night was because God wanted it to resonate with them that you're getting ready to lay down and go to sleep. But you're doing so as a result of the benevolence of God. God wants them to understand that these 12 stones, my beloved, are not merely, get this, to be set up where you worship, but they're to be set up where you sleep. Yes. Somebody missed what I just said. <laughs> he, he literally says to them, you don't need to just remember the goodness of God when you show up at church. You ought to remember the goodness of God where you sleep. So, so, somebody missed what I just said. You see, a whole lot of us have to be prompt and we have to be primed when we get to church. As a matter of fact, that's why in any one given worship experience, we have to say, say amen. We have to say, put your hands together. But the reality of it is, is that that is an indicator of what you do when you're not here. Stay with me. Because if you were a worshiper at home, when you got to church, it would just be a continuation of what you're already doing up in your house. I wish I had a witness here. That's why some folk, you can't move them. Well, you, you ought not be alarmed by that because if in your home every now and again you are not in the kitchen fixing your coffee and the goodness of the Lord come to your mind and you begin to just shout right there, you begin to thank God for the cup of coffee that he just blessed you. Talk to me, somebody. If you driving down the road, it ought to renew your commitment to the Lord. Lord, you've been watching over me. 
I mean, how many individuals will travel up and down the highways and get on airplanes this weekend and the goodness of the Lord will keep them and when they land or get to their destination, they won't even have the decency to say to the Lord, Lord, I thank you because it wasn't the airplane pilot that got me to my destination, but it was your grace and your mercy. It was you getting under the wings of the airplane and holding the airplane up and getting me where I need to be. Lord, it wasn't the fact that I'm, I'm such a good driver, but it's the fact that you were the pilot. Ah, uh, yeah, you took control of the steering wheel of my automobile, and as I traveled down the freeway, you kept me by your grace, and now that I've arrived where I am, I'm going to bless your name. I'm going to praise your name. I'm going to magnify your name. I'm going to thank you for your goodness in my life. These stones were to remind them to renew their commitment to God. Saints, every time God blesses you to set foot up in the Mount Pleasant Church, I don't care what you're going through. I don't care who makes you mad. I don't care what folks say about you. I don't care what folks say to you. When you leave up out of here, you ought to leave up out of here redetermined. You ought to leave up out of here recommitted that I'm going to run on and give God the praise. Well, I've got to let you go. The third thing, not only does Gilgal represent and is symbolic of a place where they are to renew their personal commitment to God, but then finally, I want you to get this. Gilgal is a place where they are able to celebrate deliverance. Because when you look in verses 19 and 20, it says, on the 10th day of the first month, the people went up from the Jordan and camped at Gilgal on the eastern border of Jericho. And Joshua set up at Gilgal the 12 stones that they had taken out of the Jordan. Now, it is significant that this happened on the 10th day of the first month because, my beloved, historically, this 10th day of the first month is exactly 40 years to the day since Israel had marched out of Egypt. In other words, 40 years earlier to the day, God had delivered Israel out of Egyptian captivity. And so then, leaving uh, the edge of the river, the Israelites go to a place that is called Gilgal. They go to Gilgal to camp and to spend the night. Gilgal, as the text indicates, is on the eastern border of Jericho. But there is something definitively important about Gilgal because Gilgal literally means the reproach has been rolled away. Forty years of spiritual defeat and failure have now been rolled away. In the life and in the essence of Israel, it is the dawn of a great new beginning. God, by his divine providence, after 40 years of going through struggle, God now chooses to deliver them into their destiny. What appeared to be hopeless now has come to fruition. That that appeared to be out of their grasp 
has now been provided by God himself. They've been wandering in the wilderness for 40 long years. But now they've arrived at Gilgal. And now the Lord is preparing to give them their destiny. The reality is that as believers, we must always remember that God is a deliverer. And the reason that we establish monuments and memorials in our lives is to remind us that if God has done it one time, then he's able to do it again. If God has opened doors one time, then he's able to open doors again. If God is able to deliver one time, then surely God is able to deliver again. And so then the significance of Gilgal is that Gilgal represents the deliverance of God. And the last time I checked, every one of us need the deliverance of God. For without God, we can do nothing. For without God, the enemy would overtake us. For without God, Satan would ultimately defeat us. But with God, we're more than conqueror. And so then it pays to have some memories. As you sit here on today, have you any memories of the goodness of the Lord in your life? As you look back over your life, have you had a Gilgal experience where God has opened doors out of nowhere, where God hath made a provision out of nothing, where God hath blessed you to cross through adversity, and on the other side of adversity, you've been able to shout with the voice of triumph that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, there is no telling where I would be. But the good news is that he kept my enemies away and he turned my midnight in today. The good news is that he rocked me in the cradle of his arms when he knew that I needed to be sheltered from all hurt and harm. Is there anybody here who has some memories about the goodness of the Lord? If you're here on today, and you've been saved by the power of God. There ought to be one memory that we never forget. It is the memory of him out on a hill called Calvary. It is the memory of them nailing his hands to an old rugged cross nailing his feet uh, to an old rugged cross. Uh, is there anybody here uh, who has the memory uh, of them standing him up uh, between heaven and hell uh, and him dying uh, out on that old rugged cross? Uh, do me a favor. Uh, Look at your neighbor 
and say to them, neighbor, I'll never forget what the Lord has done for me. Tell them, neighbor, I'll never forget how he hung, bled, and died for my sin. But above all, I'll never forget that he didn't stay dead. Is there anybody here who's glad on this day that Jesus didn't stay dead, but that he got up early Sunday morning? And when he got up, he got up with all power in his hand. Do me a favor, look at your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, there are some things that I may not know. There are some places that I cannot go. But there is one thing that I'm sure of. I'm sure that God is real. Is there anybody here who knows he's real? Is there anybody here who knows you've been born again? Is there anybody here who knows you're saved? If you're saved and you're glad about it, why don't you talk back at me? Shout yeah! Shout yeah! Shout yeah! Shout yeah! I'm through. I'm through. Never forget what the Lord has done for you. Everybody in here ought to have a Gilgal. Now I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. God says through Joshua to them, Put the 12 stones there and they are to be a memorial for ever. Now I need you to hear me and I'm through saints. What God has done for you, don't be shamed. Is my mic on? What God has done for you, don't be, don't be shamed. God says to Joshua, tell them that it is to be a memorial forever. In other words, I want those stones to stay right there so everybody that sees them knows that God has been good to Israel. When folk look at you, God wants people to know he's been good to you. So don't, don't be scared. Don't, don't. Don't get so lifted up. Those stones were a reminder not only to others that God had blessed Israel, but get this, it was a reminder to Israel that you didn't make it over on your own. Somebody needs to hear me today because I'm afraid that we live in a world and the society that we live in, look at how things are perpetuated now. In these modern days, we have individuals who feel that they've made it on their own. Talk to me, somebody. But I think that all of us would have to admit in this place that we're here today because of the goodness of God. I close by saying this to you. Do you have any classmates, schoolmates, friends, neighbors, folk you grew up with on the block, pookie wookie, people that you knew, that you grew up with, but they dead and gone? How many of you have friends and loved ones that you grew up with, family members, they, they died tragic deaths? But look at what God has blessed you with. God has given you. <laughs> 
So let me help you. It wasn't because you were better than anybody else. It wasn't even because you had the mama or the daddy that you had. But it was because of the goodness of God. And as we celebrate Memorial Day weekend, there will be people going all over the country memorializing those who've given their lives and their loved ones and this thing and the other. But the one thing that all of us ought to memorialize is the reality that God has blessed us to still be here. And every chance we get. See, see, let me share with you. That's what gets me. That's what gives, gets me about a nation that is supposed to perpetuate and be the leading Christian nation in the world is that on events like this, when we are to be memorializing the goodness of God in our lives, many individuals take this time to their selves. They take it to promote themselves, to do what they want to do. But remember something, until we as a nation come back to honoring God and recognizing that God is God and that this nation was founded on the Judeo-Christian principles of serving and honoring God and giving God the best we have. God will not begin to bless this nation. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked way, then will I hear from heaven, heal their land, forgive their sin. So everybody up in here, Lord, help me to have a Gilgal, a place where I never forget what you've done for me. All over the church, will you rest on your feet? I want to extend the invitation to Christian discipleship right now. If you're in this place, you've never given your life to the Lord Jesus, or if you're here, you're saved, but you're without a church home. Wherever you are, wherever you are in the sanctuary right now, there are those in the aisle who'll greet you. They'll meet you. They'll walk down the aisle with you. If you're in this place, you've never accepted Christ, or if you're in this place and you need a church home, you're saved, but you need a church home, We'd be delighted to be your church home. I'd be delighted to be your pastor. Will you come? Will you come if you're here? For me, oh Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me. Oh Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me. Oh Jesus, I'll never forget. No, no. Jesus, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Yeah, Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Yeah, Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Yeah, Jesus, I'll never forget. No, well, how can I forget? What you've done for me, well, how can I forget how you set me free? Yeah, how can I forget how you brought me? Yeah, how can I forget? No, no. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget. No. One more time. How can I forget what you've done for me? How can I how you set me, how can I forget how you brought me, uh, how can I forget, no, everybody, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done, Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me, 
Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget. Right where you stand, right where you stand. If you'll reach over and take somebody by the hand, I want to pray with you briefly. There may be those who have needs in the house. You need to know that God specializes yes, yes. in meeting your needs. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you, we bless you, we thank you. And oh, how we thank you for the blessed privilege of salvation. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, oh God, for the precious gift of memory. Thank you, oh God, that we have the opportunity to remember the things that you've done in our lives. Now, Lord, in this moment, we pray that you would forgive us of our sin. Lord, we stand in need of forgiveness. And so, oh God, we pray now that your mercy would abound in our lives. Father, as we assemble in this place, there are needs throughout the house. Some have one need, oh God, and others have others. But in the name of Jesus, whatever the needs are right now, Master, would you meet the need? Some are sick. We know you to be a healer. Some are in trouble. We know you to be a way maker. But right now, whatever the need is, in the name of Jesus, please sir, meet our need. Now, Lord, we thank you that we have some precious memories. We thank you that we have memories of being saved, memories of those who've laid a foundation in our lives, memories, oh God, of those things that you brought us through and those things that you brought us out of, memories. Oh, God, of Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. Memories of him being resurrected from the dead. Memories of the fact that we have eternal life waiting on us. Thank you right now for precious memories. And, Lord, never let us forget everything that you've done in our lives.